we're going to move ahead with our QI projects. Each of our residents, you know, is involved in a QI project. We're going to get some feedback on those today. The first up is Sean Collin, who is again going to talk to us uh, in recorded fashion about Utah teleophthalmology project updates. Good afternoon, everyone. As I hinted at in my talk this morning, I'm back to give an update on the Utah teleophthalmology program. Unfortunately, I have little new to report in the way of data, but that's not to say that there hasn't been quite a lot of ongoing work. So I'll give a brief review of the project. Apologies if you've heard this twice or three times before. And then an update on where things are now. I started this project with Dr. Hansen really in my intern year with People's Health Clinic, a free clinic in Park City. We tried different cameras, different workflows, and quickly expanded to Moab Free Clinic, as well as to several federally qualified health centers under the Association for Utah Community Health, or OUCH, umbrella. In all, we've been working with 17 different sites and a few others who have expressed interest in joining in the future. The project has evolved quite a bit in the past three years. This is data provided by community health centers with whom we've had the most substantial ongoing relationship. In October 2021, we were using a handheld camera with mediocre imaging at a single site and have subsequently grown to have incredible imaging capabilities at all seven of their sites. The solid orange line represents data from one of their larger clinic sites, the one with which we initially started, and the blue line represents all sites. The part of this project that really sets it apart from many other volunteer-based screening efforts is our partnership with INUC. They've been incredibly supportive and helpful in designing this program to be sustainable, affordable for patients, and financially beneficial for all stakeholders, which is a tall order when using cutting-edge technology in these types of settings where many patients are uninsured or underinsured. We'll begin with using their eye screen system, which is a sort of artificial intelligence in the background system that still relies on physician readers. We hope to upgrade to their fully autonomous AI system, iART, in the near future. In the meantime, the agreement will allow our retina fellows to be paid to review photos for the project. One thing that's particularly exciting is that INUC has artificial intelligence algorithms for macular degeneration, glaucoma, and diabetic retinopathy progression tracking, which very recently received the CE mark in Europe, but are not approved for use in the US. Consequently, they're only available for use in the iScreen system, so our clinics will have the benefit of these new algorithms double-checking, if you will, uh, physician reads before almost anyone else in the country. iScreen can be used with any camera, but across the board, all clinics involved have been motivated to raise funds to buy this camera, the DRS+. And these photos are some examples of why. It's extremely high quality, and we've been seeing so much pathology. So many treatment-naive young uh, patients with proliferative diabetic retinopathy that have probably had minimal reduction in vision but are on the precipice of blinding disease. Based on studies of similar populations, we also suspect that there's a particularly high rate of glaucoma in this population, and we've been seeing uh, photos that, that corroborate that. Unfortunately, this is really all anecdotal at this point. For almost the past year, Dr. Hansen and I have been doing 50 plus screenings per week at all seven community health center sites on a volunteer basis, but we have virtually no data to show for it. On the side of logistics, legal and privacy, we've been running into some roadblocks that have kept us stalled at this point for several months and our ability to expand the program and collect data is limited without the INUC integration. We've attempted to gather data directly from reports from Community Health Center's EMR, but the data that was pulled was clearly incomplete. We do know that many patients have been seen and have received care or surgery at the Moran and at clinics across the state. And in that sense, we know it's been at least partially a success. The integration with INUC will allow us to begin gathering data at a more granular level and also on a project-wide level. And we hope to use this to track referral completions, treatments received, and outcomes more specifically. We're hopeful that once we have this foundational data, we'll be able to apply for an NIH grant with Dr. Stagg to use healthcare informatics to improve community health. This could be tremendously helpful in improving how results and referrals are communicated with patients and in helping to create the crucial bridge between screening and outcomes. 
For now, we're continuing to provide the support we can through the screening programs already in place and remain hopeful that this can be a sustainable collaboration between the Moran, INUC, and our community safety net clinics that will provide an increasingly refined and high quality service for years to come. That's all for this update. Again, happy to hear any questions, comments, or suggestions. This is my personal email. Thanks, everyone. <music>